All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vion at this hour. The China's Communist Party has wrapped up its once-in-five-year Congress in Beijing, with Xi Jinping expected to seal an unprecedented third term in power. The President Xi presided over the week-long closed-door meeting with top officials where some 2,300 party delegates attended the event. And in the closing ceremony, Xi Jinping in fact asked his party delegates to bury their heads and to work hard in order to win. And moreover, at the closing session, China's ruling Communist Party approved a new slate of its 205-member Central Committee that will set the leadership and also the agenda for the next five years. And apart from this, the new Central Committee will also approve a reshuffle of the 25-member Politburo. Then the Politburo will approve the Politburo Standing Committee, which is China's apex body in terms of the power structure. Moreover, several top officials, including Premier Li Keqiang, are now stepping down from the Standing Committee, and this will now allow Xi Jinping to appoint his new loyalists. And on the 23rd of October, the country's senior political leadership is expected to be revealed. In addition to this, at the event, the party also approved the amendments to the constitution that aimed at cementing the core status of Xi Jinping, as well as the guiding role of his political thought within the Communist Party, which has about 96 million members. And with a third unprecedented five-year leadership term on the horizon for Xi Jinping, the presidency will, of course, solidify Xi's place as China's most powerful ruler since Mao Zedong, the founding leader of People's Republic of China, who had led the country for almost over a quarter of a century. And also to give us more insights in terms of what all of this, of course, means, both for the people within China and indeed for China's foreign policy, we're being joined in by Mr. Jamil N. Jafar, who is an assistant professor of law at the Scalia Law School. He's also the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute. But Professor Jaffo, thank you very much indeed for taking your time out and speaking to us. Now, this is, of course, a very critical moment in Chinese politics. Now, Xi Jinping is expected to get an unprecedented third term at this for recently concluded Congress that is held once in five years. How do you think things are likely to change? Firstly, within China, is Xi Jinping now going to double down in terms of the policies that he has for his own country? Well, I think that's likely to happen. I think that Xi Jinping is, in fact, likely to double down on his existing policies, including zero COVID uh, and the like, that have been very controversial even within China, uh, because it's dem he's demonstrated now that he has the support of the key uh, players in the Communist Party that backed him. He's got his own members now on the 200-member Central Committee. Um, he's likely to appoint uh, the key members of the Politburo and the seven-member uh, Politburo Central Committee. So, look, it looks like that he's going to have that power, and that just means that he'll be able to uh, push forward with his aggressiveness towards Taiwan, his continued consolidation of power uh, at home, and his uh, oppressive treatment of various populations within China, including Muslim minorities in the Xinjiang province um, and other religious minorities. Absolutely, indeed. And also considering the fact that it now looks like Xi Jinping has absolutely no opposition within his own party's power structure. So does this mean that China will become even more belligerent and even more aggressive, which is going to be a clear break from what China had been before Xi Jinping? For instance, under Hu Jintao, there was this doctrine of the peaceful rise of China. But right now, what we're looking at is a very assertive and a very belligerent China. I think that's exactly right. You see words uh, in the new uh, Communist Party, in the, in the Constitution, uh, words like struggle. Um, and the like, and a new assertion uh, about Taiwan, about it, about China's control over Taiwan. And in addition, you make the point about Hu Jintao and his perspective. Interestingly, we don't know what exactly was going on, but Hu Jintao was escorted out of the room during the closing ceremony uh, just yesterday uh, by two men, um, and it appeared that he was reluctant to leave. So once again, a demonstration uh, that Xi has, uh, is consolidating his power um, and is likely, as you correctly say, uh, to make, put China in a more aggressive position.
And also, how would the West want to look at what is happening within China? Because Xi Jinping virtually has no opposition whatsoever. He's spoken in the past repeatedly of wanting to reunite Taiwan that he sees as a renegade province of China by force if needed. How concerned do you think the Americans will be of the possibility of tensions rising in the Taiwan Strait in the next few years? Well, look, I think we should be, we should be very concerned. Uh, America, India alike should be very concerned about uh, China's aggression on its border areas, whether that's regarding to ta regarding Taiwan uh, or the or the Indian border, as we saw just a just a year or two back uh, with that with that with that conflict that took place. So look, I mean, I think what we see here, um, as you point out, is a consolidation of power. Li Keqiang is no longer going to be the premier. He's not even going to be on the Politburo or the Politburo Standing Committee. Um, his purported successor, Wang Yang, also did not make the list for the Central Committee, which means he won't be on the Politburo or the Popular Central Committee. And so as you point out, that means uh, Xinjiang has, has complete uh, power uh, to do what he wants to. He's put his people in place, and that means there is no opposition. And as you say, that will lead to a more aggressive China in all of its border areas, which should concern all of us, all of our allied nations. Absolutely indeed, uh, Professor Jaffa. Thank you very much indeed for joining us from Washington, D.C. and getting us that very important perspective, because it does appear that China is in fact on the cusp of some important changes, because there's virtually no opposition for Xi Jinping. And this, of course, means that he is going to be even more assertive than what he's been in his previous two terms. Exactly right. And also, we earlier spoke with Mr. Lyle Goldstein, who's the Director of Asia Engagement and Defence Priorities. He joined us from Barrington in Rhode Island, and this is what he had to say. I expect... Uh a bit of a mix uh, in there, um, you know, that there's definitely going to be uh, some turnover, but uh, clearly um, uh, the party does value loyalty extremely highly, you know, that's obvious. Um, uh, on the other hand, Xi Jinping, you know, um, he uh, himself, um, I think, has, has uh, you know, his own sort of bold vision for China, uh, very confident in his views and his uh, approach to leadership. So, um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he uh, sees the need to to bring in uh, similarly uh, broad thinking and, uh, you know, some some uh, young leaders with with uh, some flair. So, you know, I, I, I do think there will be uh, some degree of uh, generational turnover. That said, though, I mean, this is a highly conservative regime that is uh, very concerned about stability and security. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, I don't think any kind of dramatic change is in the offing. I, if there's one way to summarize the uh, party Congress, it seems to be um, uh, the, the news is that there's no news. <laughs> And also there were some pretty unexpected developments that took place at the high-profile meeting of China's ruling party in Beijing. The former Chinese president, Hu Jintao, interestingly, was unexpectedly led out of the closing ceremony of the Communist Party Congress. Now, the frail-looking 79-year-old 79 year former president seemed very reluctant to leave from the front row of the Politburo Standing Committee. Thing. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.